So we've done those first bits on Venn diagrams. We're now going to be looking at something called conditional probability. Now, I'm going to set the scene for conditional probability, okay? We might talk about the probability on session two of this lesson. The probability that Mugi is late might be a particular probability. The probability that Rayhan is late is a particular probability. But if Mugi is late, the probability that Rayhan will be late is going to be different. Are you sure? I think Both so. late together. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, that's if Mugi is late, if I know that Mugi is late, the chances that Rayhan is late is going to be different. Oh, okay? oh and the way, the way that we talk about this probability is called conditional probability. Because the probability that Rayhan will be late is dependent, is conditional on where the Mugi is going to be late for the lesson. Okay? And you've come across these kinds of ideas before about probability trees in GCSE where the probability of one branch is specific to that particular original branch that we have here. Okay? What we've got is here, um, this says, I don't know, whatever this event was, this is the probability that A has happened. And then here, we're saying, what is the probability that B has happened, given that A has happened? This branch that we've got here is the probability that B, given that A has already happened. So this is me saying, like, what's the probability that Rayhan is late, given that Muhi is late? Pretty high. What's the probability that this is the probability that Rayhan is not late, given that Muhi is late? Pretty low. Okay. Then we've got down here. This would be the probability that Muhi is not late. This branch is saying what's the probability that Rayhan is late, given that Muhi is on time. And this would be, what's the probability that Rayhan is on time, given that Muhi is on time? So given that, is saying, the thing that comes after this line that I've got here, this line says, given that, the given that sentence means the second thing has already happened. What are the chances that the first thing happened, given that this second thing has already happened? Yes. Why do you use a line? It's just a it's just a notation that says the probability that B has happened given A. We want to say that. What do you mean? Like because this happened, therefore. We're uh, saying because this has happened, we're now talking about B happening, but oh, assuming that this thing has already happened. Because if I just wrote down the probability that Rayhan is late, that's not going to be the same as the probability that Rayhan is late given that movie is late. Because the probability that Rayhan is late is actually quite low. They're not often very late to lesson in session two, right? But if Mugi is late, then Rayhan is very likely to be late. So the probability of B does not always equal the probability of B given A. Now, there is a unique situation when the probability of B is equal to the prob probability of B given A. What can you say? What could you tell me? If, yeah, what sort of the same probability? Not if A didn't happen, what did you say? Independent. independent. Yeah, independent. It would be like if instead of it being Rayhan and Muhi, if this was Rayhan and A being late was, I don't know, who do you not go to the shops with? Okay, Anita. <laughs> Anita. You don't go to the shop with Anita, right? This might be the probability that Rayhan is late and the probability that Rayhan is late given that Anita is late. Well, Rayhan and Anita don't have, have got nothing to do with each other. They don't go to the co-op together. So, if, oh, sorry, not wrong. if they were equal, then B and A are independent, okay? If they're not equal, they're not independent. Because, obviously, the way that these two behave at break time... <laughs> Why are you going to say it like that? Because <laughs> you were late last week, so it's in my mind. <laughs> well, one of you left the pass of crisps in here and it wound me up, so... Oh, that was moving. That, that, that was moving. That was moving. No, so we're, no, we're, we're going to come to this idea a little bit more about when they're equal, when, when they show independence and when they don't show independence. It's confusing, but we've got to try and understand what it's saying. Okay? Now, who remembers along the branches? What do you do with the probabilities as you go along the branches? You multiply them. Okay? <laughs> so, so this branch up here, this is the probability 
that A happens and the probability that B happens. The probability of A and the probability of B. So you find that by doing the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given A. We just come up with that formula because we know it builds on the things we have about tree diagrams from, from year 12, right? And from year 9, year 10. But the most common way that you will see this formula written is like this one down here. It's just rearranged. The probability of B, given that A has happened, is the probability that both of them have happened divided by the probability of A. And the way that I remember this is you're dividing the chance that they both happened by the one that's given that. So I've had said here, you're dividing by the event that you're conditioning on. You're conditioning on movie being late, so we divide by movie being late. I don't know why I've put this scenario. I was a couple of minutes before that the, I started teaching this, I thought, oh, what am I going to use for conditioning? I was like, great, the co op. <laughs> you do get the formula in the formula book. I actually think it's in a rearranged form. I actually think it might be like this, but this is more useful for us to use. Okay, you'll find this one more useful to use. Um, and it's, we're going to try and make sense of what this looks like in Venn diagrams, as well as using it as a formula. Venn diagrams are a really important tool in maths to help us visualise what's happening. Now similarly, and I wouldn't necessarily advise you writing these down, we can see here that the probability of A and not B coming from this branch and this branch is going to be the probability of A multiplied by the probability of not B given A. So if I'm going to make this the subject, you get the probability of not B given A is the same as the probability of A and not B divided by the probability of A. And I just want to point out some of the facts that you'll be able to notice about the, this formula here, okay? The top part is always the union of the two things we're looking at. And the bottom part is always the condition, the thing that is given that. So you can make predictions of what it would be for, I don't know, the probability of not A, given that it is not B. What would be on the top? The not the union, the intersection of not A and not B over the probability of the probability of not B, the second part of it in this case. So just how you notice that this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, and the top is always the intersection of those two things that you've got, in, that you've got at the top, okay? So we're going to try and apply some of this, because this is where probability gets really interesting, because in real life, most things are connected to each other. Most things that we're interested in studying are not independent. Everything in real life, you change one thing, it has an impact on other things. And this is why it's a really powerful area of math to work out how things are going to behave. So we're going to start off with something simple. We're not going to do um, we're not going to do anything like this in the future. But I just want to kind of simplify this because you've actually done this at GCSE. You have done these questions before in GCSE. You might teach foundation GCSE, and they do it as well. It says the following two-way table shows what foreign language students in Year Nine study. B is the event that a student is a boy. F is the event they choose French as their language. So, I don't know, how many people were not boys and didn't pick French? 22. 22. 22. Okay, so you can see 22 people were not boys and, and didn't study French. So the first thing it says here is it wants us to determine the probability that someone studied French given that they were not a boy. So we're trying to say, what's the chance that someone studied French given that they were not a boy. Now the formula says that the probability of French, given that they were not a boy, what did we say goes on the top? Uh, F and not B, divided by the probability that it is not B. So we now want to look on our diagram and find out how many people are, studied, are not boys and study French. 38. Not boys and study French. There are 38. And how many of them are not boys? 60. 60. So our probability is 38 out of 60. Now you could have answered this just back in GCSE. If I wrote this in words, if I said 
a girl is chosen. So I guess you <laughs> Or a not a not boy is chosen. <laughs> what uh, what is the probability they study French? You could have done this in GCSE, right? You would have had a look and see, okay, well, there's 60 girls, so a girl has been chosen. I want to find out what's the probability that they study French. It's got to be 38 out of 60. Now, this is what I mean by the restricted sample space. We've been told that it's given that they are not a boy. So the only column that I'm interested in is this. Because this is the thing that's already happened. We've already said, I picked a not boy, I picked a girl. And now that that has happened, I want to find out what's the chance that they also study French. So this is what we call a restricted sample space, because we're no longer looking at the whole set of 100 people. We've zoomed in and said, okay, well, I don't care about the boys. I only care about the not boys. I only care about the girls in this particular scenario that we've got here, which is why I know it's going to be out of 60, and the people that study French is 38. So the restricted sample space is no like maths you write down, you just kind of look, and you see from looking at what it is. So I'm going to try the restricted sample space again for this one, and it says the probability that they are a boy, given that they don't study French. So this means we're only looking at the people now who don't study French. So the people who don't study French are along here. So we're only looking at the 48 people who don't study French. And how many of those are boys? 26. 26. So it's 26 out of 48. The given that bit is the bit that you would see in GCSE questions saying like, uh, a French student was randomly picked. What is the chance that they are a boy? And you knew how to do that from GCSE. We're now just doing it with Venn diagrams and things in the chat in UK. Okay, so the second one, these all represent these numbers in here, they represent frequencies. So I don't know what the event A is and what the event B is, but it looks like eight things are in the set A, six things are in the set B, and in total it looks like there's 15 things. Okay, we don't even know what this is talking about. And the first thing it wants me to find out is the probability of A given that B has already happened. And we know from the formula that A given B is A and B over the probability of B. What's the probability of A and B? Excuse me. No, not two. The probability of A and B is two fifteen. Okay? It's not saying it, it will work out in the way in a second, but we always include this with probabilities. And the probability of B is what? Is six fifteen. So the 15th bit do cancel, and you do just get two out of six, or a third. So the answer is a third. But I'm going to do the restricted sample space now. So it says, given that, B. So I don't really care about anything else in my Venn diagram apart from B. I don't realise, I don't think I've actually recorded any of this. Um, so we're only going to be looking at the B section of this bit that we've got here, okay? So for the restriction on the sample space, this is the bit that we're interested in. We're pretending that none of the other stuff has actually happened. And we want to find out what's the chance that A happens out of all of this. So we can see, very quickly, you just go straight to 2 out of 6. Because there's 6 there in total, and there's 2 of them there. So it just becomes 1 out of 3. That's what we do mean by a restricted sample space. We like highlight the only bits that we're looking at, and then we just make the probabilities go from there. So I think these other ones we can do, we can probably use the restricted sample space. We now want to find the probability that it's not A, given that it is not B. So I'm going to highlight this in a different colour. The probability that it is not A, given that it is not B. So the bit of the sample space that I'm going to be looking at is this red section. 
So that's the thing I'm looking at. I'm ignoring that green bit for this one that I have here. And I then know it's going to be out of 9, because that's how much is, is, is not B. How much of it is not A? 3. So it's 3 out of 9, and it's a third. This one then gets a little bit more complicated. So I might need to uh, get rid of some of my highlight on here. So we can draw it again and reuse it. You could just draw another diagram for this if you wanted to. We've now got to work out the probability of B, given that it is A, or B. A bit more complicated. So, given that it is A, we want to find out the probability that it is B. So that first bit is going to be 6 over 12, or it's allowed to be in B. So add 6 over. Wait, so can you do that first bit again, please? So this first bit says the probability of A, sorry, the probability of B given that it's A, yeah. or the probability of B. Hang on, how am I going to draw that on a Venn diagram? I think we've got to do this on a... Can you, do, you, wouldn't you have to do two separate pieces to figure this out? Like, there's two, it can be either one of them. Yeah, what is the way to so draw that one? Somebody just shade A and B and then just work out how much of B. Oh, I've, I've misinterpreted the way this is written. This is supposed to be written like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That made no oh, sense. I was like, how does this make any sense? So it's the probability of A or B, which is all of this. So we shade in that bit to begin with. And then it's the probability of B out of that. So it's out of all of these things, which is 12. I was wondering why that, is, that bit didn't make sense the way it was written. And the probability that it is B is 6. So it's just a half for that bit. Are you sure it's going to be that? 100%. 100%. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You can't have the union of a conditional probability and a normal probability. It has to be this A, A, U, B bit has to be the, the bit there. No. Um, so I'm going to do those next few questions, and then you're going to do the your turn questions, and then I think we'll, we'll finish up from there, OK? So this next bit, I think we'll probably do a combination of the formulae and the, the other the restricted sample space. So we'll do some of these with the formula, I think. Probability of A is this, and A and B is this. What is the probability of B given A? So B given A is the probability of both of them happening. We tend to write these in alphabetical order, A and B, over the probability of A or B, should it be? A. It should be A, because that's the second letter. So we're just going to have 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5, which is 0 0.6. So this one, drawing a Venn diagram, is going to be helpful. We've been told the probability of y, the probability of x and y, and we want to try and work out the probability of not x given y. It just all sounds quite confusing. So when we draw our Venn, so x and y is 0.4. What should be inside this bit? 0 0.2, because the whole thing is 0 0.6. And we want to find out the probability that it is not in x, given that we've selected y. So we actually don't need to find this probability, and we don't need to find this probability here. So if I restrict the sample space just to this second bit, I'm only going to highlight this area. So I can now see that it's going to be out of It's going to be out of 0.6, because that's the only part of the diagram I'm looking at. And we want to find out that it is not x. How much is not x? 
0 0.2 out of 0 0.6, which is 2 over 6 or 1 over 3. So probably a Venn diagram is going to be helpful here because we can't go straight to the formula. The formula for this is the probability of B and not A over the probability of not A. And I just don't know what that top bit is. I don't know that top bit very clearly yet. So I'm going to draw a Venn. So their shared probability is 0.4. Move here, this bit here. OK, thank you, Hamza. And this bit here, 0 0.1. So this whole thing on the outside must be 0 0.4 in case we need that. Now, we need to restrict the sample space, if we're going to do a restricted sample space, to the not A section. Now, the not A section is all of this. So that's the bit I'm restricting it to, because I'm saying that's the thing that's happening, given that it is not A. And we want to say, what is the probability that it is B? Well, it's out of 0 0.5. That's what we've restricted it to with the yellow area. And the probability that it is B is 0 0.1. So it's a fifth or 0 0.2. So personally, I will always try and draw a Venn diagram. And then if you want to, you can always use the formula to support what that question will look like. So I think when this video, if you do want to watch this video again, I think it's probably going to be quiet. And it often, if it's plugged in, it has like a beeping noise. So apologies for that if you want to look over this again. Um, but hopefully, it will just be mushing up all the stuff about Rayhan and Muhi talking about them being late and stuff. <laughs> so so that you're not back late, I will write what the homework is on the Padlet. It's going to be to do the next couple of page of questions. It's going to be the your turn and more practice, if you want to do the more practice ones. Um, and then a few stuff from the exercise as well. Okay, I'll see you next session.